Candy diamonds and pills. Candy is the sweet tooth that we all have. Diamonds, who don't like a male or female. Pills is the addiction that we have to get it all. You know, it's pretty simple. Candy diamonds and pills, and it was inspired um, by a punk rock group that I like called Drama Rama. Pretty that much, mean, it was yeah, that's it. Nothing major. I get all my titles, not to interrupt you, but I get all my titles for a lot of my projects um, just from inspiration that someone might say about me or a song that I might listen to. I won't even work on nothing until I have a title. So that's kind of why it took so long, because it took me about eight months to get the title and about four months to do it. Uh, well, at the time, I had purple and turquoise hair. <laughs> and I just, uh, someone reached out to me on Instagram. And... Um, yeah, he just was like, y'all, I got some dope ideas for you. And it was just real simple. I gave him the title. He came back with the artwork. And I was like, wow, it was pretty dope. So just wanted to do something different. It don't have to be my face all the time. You know what I'm saying? You know, it's not about, not, it's about my work and um, the, the cover. And that's a part of art. So, you know, not at all. It was just, I was done. And I was like, I have to get this out now because I can't keep pushing it off. Because I don't want to, like, keep insulting my fans and just making them feel like, She's bullshitting because at the end of the day, they are going to, um, you know, kind of respond to how you present yourself. And if I'm constantly looking like I'm bullshitting, they're going to lose interest in me and um, not believe in me anymore. You know what I mean? So I was pushing it back because I wanted it to be right for them. And if I, I'm a perfectionist when it comes to my music because I do rap because it's fun and I love to do it. It's not like you know, it's not a, a have to type thing. So I would have pushed it back for another 10 years. So no, no specific reason for the date. It was just a right now, I have to, the moment is right. Yeah. Why well, I was so short because, you know, I have other things that I want to work on and I, I feel like it's a great um, time to get paid for things that I do. I have all kinds of dope fans that want to buy candy diamonds and pills right now. And that's why I'm going to release a bonus and it's gonna have like exclusive songs and it's gonna be for sale. And even this free mixtape, I'm gonna like have it on my, um, my website and I'm gonna be selling hard copies with my autograph and stuff like that just for the hardcore Gangsta Boo fans. And I just want it to be short, sweet, simple, you know, keep them one more, you know, stuff like that. You can't give them all at the same time. And I got a lot to give, so. Be King. Be King. Um, it was, I came up with the songs, I came up with the concepts for the material. Um, outside of a couple of them or whatever, and yeah, he arranged it. That's why I pretty much had him down to executive produce it because, um, you know, he in his element right now. While I'm off listening to fucking suicidal tendencies, um, he's listening to Fetty Wap, you know, so he's very in tune with what's going on right now. Like, so, you know, he's my ear to the streets, and shout out to BK. Oh, it's definitely a flow, it's a gangster boot flow, <laughs> and it just rides. It's like, it's, it's, you don't skip any, no, you don't skip no songs. Um, I can't describe the flow outside of what I just said, not being biased or funny or nothing. It just ride. It's like, it's, and it's short. Even when I heard, I was like, oh shit, it's kind of short, but it's straight to the point. You know, you don't really have to go, you know, waste time doing a whole bunch of expressing yourself a whole bunch of different type of ways when you could just, you know, make it real short, simple, and sweet. Especially nowadays, niggas be on Molly and all kind of crazy shit. Niggas ain't got time to be writing 30 songs. You got 30 songs in your project. 20 of them bullshit, I know for a fact, or it's like Rush, you know? In my era, anyway. 1999 is like, that's what the fans have been responding to. And um, I was actually in the studio with the Kid. He's on the project, he signed a drummer boy, um, and he was just helping me vibe in the studio. He was like, what's some of your best times? And I was like, yo, in the 90s. And, you know, like 99, I was like fresh from where the dollars at, I got that check, you know, it was like really good, you know, it was, it was fun, I was a teenager, I was like 19, and um, everything was more just real, it wasn't really fake, like it wasn't a lot of internet shit and a lot of easy access to everything, it was more exclusive and elite, so for me that was real good to be a part of the elite industry in the 90s, and that's how I came up with 1999, and I felt like a lot of people be saying, Yo, what's up with that old gangster? We want that old boo. And I'm like, what is the old boo? Oh, okay, y'all want me to be on some just super local Memphis shit. That's what's up. I could do that in my sleep. So, yeah, I did 1999. I did Meet the Devil. Um, just to, because um, it gets annoying when people ask me, why did I leave 3-6 or what's up with the Mafia 6? It's like played out. That's the most played out question that I could, 
I want to see some is your ass real questions. Or is that a fake ass? Like, bitches walking around with fake butts, like, drinking water. Niggas ain't asking them that. Like, quit asking me about 3-6. It's lame. Then my niggas, I fuck with them. I'm just, you know, we, we don't have to hang out to represent the same shit. You feel what I'm saying? So I came up with Meet the Devil, and this is just a great project. You just have to listen to it and listen to the skits that I did afterwards and, you know, decide from there how you feel about what I'm saying. It's people go have their own opinion and say whatever they want to say anyway. I don't really care. It's a waste of time caring about what strangers say. <laughs> they don't know that I did the, the skits that's like in the phone voice, really on my phone in LA at 4.15 in the morning. And B King was up, it was like 6.15 his time because he was in Texas. And we was just talking about the project. He was like, I got an idea. And he just started, I think I might've been talking to him and he was recording me. And I was like, what, you recording me? He was like, I got an idea, it's gonna sound so dope. So honestly, every skit at the end of each song on the project was just normal conversation that I was having with B King. And um, once I found out he was recording, I was like, yo, we gotta, nigga, you can't just put all this in there. So he would ask certain things that, you know, he even might want it to know, cause he's a normal individual, you know, and it just came 4.15 in the morning, early hours, LA type shit. <laughs>